poverty consumer mindset. Wealth, a producer's mindset. I make a lot of money, but I live off of 30% of my income. I live in a 2,300 square foot home. The people next to me are like working class, like teachers, firefighters. Like I could easily move to Atlanta and put a million to the side and get a mansion. I lived off 30% of my income, why? So I could have cash when big opportunities came. All right, here's a poverty mindset. Poverty mindset is, I owe somebody and I ain't gonna pay them till I die. It's a poverty mindset. When you, when you took out that student loan, you signed your name. Don't your name mean something to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of y'all got a poverty mindset. You, you ain't got nothing running over because you keep taking. I'm not telling you to ball out of control, but go to a restaurant and pay for somebody's meal. You got 20 bucks, even if it's just the old lady sitting there. You know she just bought a tea and a, a, a cheesecake. That's all she got. Don't cash her out. Come on, go to the gas station and pay for somebody's gas. The reason why you're not giving is because you're a consumer. That's how this country blew up. The country blows up off consumers. Just because you got it don't mean you got to spend it. And let me tell you something, when you're not healed, when you're not whole, and stuff has happened to all of us. I ain't sitting up here acting like something happened. But what happens is, when you get whole, you don't have to buy stuff so that people can see you. When you get whole, you buy stuff that you need and that's useful. When you're not whole, you buy stuff so people can see you got money. When you're rich, you don't want them to know you got it. I told you, I knew Tupac wasn't a thug because he had it chatted on, he had thug life. I was like, oh, he ain't no thug. That ain't no thug. Like, no, I grew up with thugs on the west side of Detroit. I, I grew up with kingpins. They not announcing. They not flashing. Come on, let's go back. American Gangster, you remember how he got caught? It was the chinchilla. He never was on that before. He always kept a low profile. He always kept a nice suit on so you didn't know who he was. It was the coat and the hat that was like ding, ding. He was never on that. My boys that was killers, they weren't walking around talking about they was killers. When Pac was wearing the big bandana and doing his thing, I was like, yo, Pac ain't no real thug. You done went from, is there a heaven for a gangster? You done went for Brent to keep your head up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you got a poverty mindset. Poverty, what well, others think about you, you and your feelings. So you buy with your feelings. You're trying to play, you're trying to play me. You're trying to play that, I'm going to a dealership. You're trying to play like I can't afford it so you can pull on my feelings. I'm good with that. I didn't come in here to prove to you I had money. Only two people you need to impress. That's God and your creditors. That's it. Other than that, you don't need to be proving nothing to nobody. You need to get out of your feelings. And the reason why they get some of y'all is because you're in your feelings. You want to prove something that already exists. I'm already in abundance. I don't need 8 million. I don't need 10 million to live. It don't take more than a million to live a year. I'm in abundance. So I don't have to run up behind every opportunity. That's why I'm telling you to be wealthy. You run up behind some stuff you shouldn't be doing because you are in poverty. People who are broke make desperate decisions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you desperate, you make desperate moves. Find an area of your life where you're not wealthy and put all your energy on it. Relationships, get the wealthy relationships. Stop hanging out with people who ain't healthy unless y'all made a commitment to help them to get healthy. Does that make sense? Get your money right, get your spiritual life right. There should be no area of your life you can't be wealthy, why? Because he said be fruitful, then he said multiply, then he said have dominion, then he said subdue. If you, got, if you ain't adding value, when it's time to start letting go, you're gonna be the first one to get cut. They cutting you first. You better pray that y'all stay in abundance. But if the abundance start getting questioned, if all you're doing is taking, you're the first one to go. 
Bro, if you could do all hell, bro, but you're not going to add the same value I'm going to add. Does that make sense? But if I'm not adding value, it seems like it's a cult. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So do me a favor. Get off that me, 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 me. Driven by your wants. The now. Immediate gratification. That base childhood boy stuff. Listen to me. The stuff you was dealing with when you was 18, 19, 20, like that sexual stuff, you grown now. You're 40 years old. Get some control now. You're a grown man. You ain't no kid no more. You can't be tossed and driven. You got kids now. You got kids, bro. You still sleeping around? You got kids. You still not getting up and going to work? You got kids now. You got people looking up to you. If you wanted to play when you were single, cool. But now you done brought somebody into this world. And as a pastor, I hate when people all of a sudden now, they want to get a divorce. Y'all got kids now. You should have got a divorce before y'all had kids. Why you going to bring somebody into this complicated mess? They don't deserve this. They didn't ask for this. You a grown man now. Don't hit sit here and tell me that the baby mama drama, the mama be tripping. I don't care if she tripping or not. That's your son. Go make it work. That's your daughter. Go make it work. Do whatever you got to do at home, girl. Say whatever you got to say. Give her whatever she got to get. But don't let no other man raise your daughter on kids. My biological father lost the right to call me by my last name that I am. I have somebody else's name because he didn't step up. So when I write my books, it don't have my name. And people who are part of my family, they might not even know that I was their kid. Why? Because somebody didn't step up. I don't care what my wife going through. I don't care what she's expecting. They're my kids. I'm going to raise my kids. And I'm not going to raise them like she wants me to raise them. I'm going to raise them to be a man. And I'm going to raise my daughter to know how to deal with men. You ain't no boy no more. This ain't no base. This ain't no, I want to go party. You've given up that right when you had kids. Hey, party's over with out of time. Got time to be party no more. Now it's time to create a legacy now. You had your fun. Now get to work. Now build a legacy. Some of you still on that boy stuff. You talking to some people you shouldn't be talking to. You grown now. You got kids. Kill her. It's over. When I was a child, when I was 18 years old, I act like that. When I was 21, I act like that. I'm 49 now. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I behaved like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut her off. So what? She going to get attitude. Cut her off. So what? what? Bump your boss. Cut your boss off. Your wife needs you. Bump your boss. My son wanted to work for a sports agent. He was all geek at. I'm going to work for them. I'm going to get the chain. I said, the chain? The chain? You don't wear nobody else's chain. You don't wear nobody else's name. They eating off of that. Your family ain't going to eat off that. You won't get a check. We building money for generations to come. You don't work for nobody else. I didn't put you in school to go give your best talent to some other man. I put you to work for this legacy. You work for your family. You don't got no options. You don't work nowhere else. You don't work for nobody else. You work for your mama. You work for your sister. You work for your aunts. You work for your grandma. You work for your family. You work for your kid. You ain't making no other man rich. Your boss don't run you. Your boss don't care about your wife and your kids. You care about your wife and kids. Do what you're supposed to do. You ain't no boy no more. You don't need their approval. You talented enough. God made you. You got everything you need. This somebody else's money. You a grown man on employment wick. You are living off of somebody else's check when you shouldn't be living off their check, but you so afraid to fly on your own. Stop being a boy and step into manhood. It's higher up here, but the rewards are better. There are two types of people in the world. There are people who spoil people and people who are looking to get spoiled. The people who are looking to get spoiled, you are dispensable. We can get rid of you. You broke because you broke. You broke because you don't add enough value. I just told you, because that's how much value I add. I came to New Orleans. I'm going out to eat. The lady at the doggone restaurant, I've never been here before. 
I went in, the owner of the store was pissed. You sat and ate in my, nobody told me. They were supposed to tell me before you came. She was pissed. You already paid the bill. Brian told me that you was coming. He told me he was going to tell you. Why did he tell? She was pissed. I had so much value to the world that the owner of a restaurant that I've never met before was pissed that I paid to eat in her restaurant. Because I took, I, I took the opportunity from her to be a blessing. And the dudes from the city tried to pay and I paid. They was like, how did you pay? You're not even from here. We gave her our credit card and told her don't pay. I'm like, bro, you young with it. You young on the get adding value tip. You young with it. I'm a vet. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? I could have let my man feed me every day. He's been taking us out. I could have let him feed me. He fed me once. I'm like, enough. You're not going to add more value to me because if you add more value, you're not going to want me to be in your presence. I will fight to add value in your life. Now you're like, why you broke? Because you take. That's why you broke. You're a taker. That's why you broke. You're not broke because you broke, you broke because of what you do. You are always looking for opportunities to get something for free. I ain't, I'm not crazy. Everybody wants something for free. But that's average thinking. What makes you great is not you say you're great. What makes you great is that you look for opportunities to add value. No, here's the deal. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You saying you want to be great. No, you don't. You want to be paid. You don't want to be great. You want to be seen. You don't you want to be seen. You don't want to sacrifice. You want to be seen. You want people to know your name. You want your name in light. Why you not rich is because why would God make you rich? It's all for you. None of your check don't, none of your increase don't go to nobody but you. Our, all of our all of our extra stuff goes to them. I get paid off my speaking. I don't get paid off other stuff like that. The reason why you are not blessed because all your money go to you. Why would God need to bless you? It ain't going nowhere else. You have enough for you. You don't need millions if you're just looking out for yourself. You need millions when you're taking care of the insurance of other people. If you are not where you want to be, it's because you're not adding value. I want you to think about where you're not adding value. So let me tell you something. If your bank account is low in any part of your life, it's my friend because you're not adding value. And then I want you to think about who are you to that, who are you in that person's life? Who are the people in your life that if you let them go, it wouldn't cost you anything, but more importantly, who are you to those people that you don't add enough value that they need to keep you around? That's what poverty is, that if you're in my life or not, you, you don't make such a significant difference, if, uh, impact that it doesn't make a difference if you're there or not. And the question is, what are you going to do about it? 10 years, and you want to know why we're so successful. Because we got 10 years of content, and millions of people are eating on it every single day. And you want to know why you broke. You're broke because you don't have enough stuff to give other people. Rich means that you're rich in natural resources, that you have not just enough for yourself, but you have enough for others. It's, it's, it's pressed down. It's pressed down. It's shaking together. It's running over. How many people in your immediate environment, those people who are in your sacred circle, represent people who are on the same mission as you? Or do you have a bunch of people on your list who are not on the same mission as you and those individuals are pulling you down? ET, how do you do what you do? I have cut off the people who are not on the same mission with me, and yes, they are very upset, and yes, they said some nasty things about me, but guess what, I cut them off anyway and I've surrounded myself with people who have the same values, who have the same mindset, and people who want to accomplish what I want to accomplish. It says every day in Africa, in the safari, a lion wakes up. Every single day in a safari, a lion wakes up, right? And, and every single day in a safari, a gazelle wakes up. I love it, I love it. It says though, here's, here's, here's what's funny. It says that if you wake up and you're a gazelle, you realize if you're going to survive as a gazelle, if you're going to survive, you must outrun the slowest gazelle. Right? In your mind, you're thinking you gotta outrun the fastest lion. That's not the truth. You just gotta stay ahead of the slow gazelle, that's it. 
right? So every single day when you wake up, whatever it is that you do professionally, you better make sure you're not in the back of the pack. You better be as close to the front, if not up front, as possible, because every single day when the lion wakes up, it's only one thing on that lion's mind, and that is catching the gazelle that couldn't keep up. What the gazelle realizes is that the way it operates, that the way it performs, that the way it goes about its daily business is contingent upon life and death. That if that gazelle does not do what he or she is supposed to do, it will be eaten by a lion. The story says that even if you are a lion, even if you are a lion and you have the advantage, that when the sun comes up, if you are a gazelle or a lion, you better get to running. Because if you are a lion, a gazelle is still not going to come to you and say, just eat me. I don't care how deep you are as a lion. When you wake up, nothing is going to come to you. Nobody's going to give you anything. They're still not giving stuff to ET. I still have to work. I still have to fly 20 hours to get to Australia. I still have to go to London. I still have to do free stuff in Detroit. I still have to drive. I'm a lion. And when the sun comes up, I still have to get to running. Here's the challenge though. I asked myself when I read that story, that's what's on the surface. I read it and I started asking myself, E.T., what's the difference between a gazelle and what's the difference between a lion? What's the difference? I know that they're wired different, but what's the difference? And what I discovered is that the gazelle is running from something. The gazelle is running from something. So as long as the lion is chasing the gazelle, the gazelle is running. But as soon as the lion stops chasing the gazelle, it stops. You will run, you'll do what you're supposed to do. As long as you're getting pushed, as long as you're getting motivated, as long as somebody is encouraging you, as long as somebody's coaching you, as long as somebody's pushing you, as long as somebody's prodding you, you're doing what you're supposed to do. As long as somebody's calling you, as long as someone is enticing you, as long as somebody's giving you rewards, you're moving. But as soon as that stops, you stop. I asked myself the question about the lion, and I said the lion is not running to be rewarded. The lion is running to eat. Every single day, the lion is running to eat because the lion realizes when he kills the gazelle, not only does he eat the gazelle, but he brings it back home. You've got to ask yourself, what's your why? What motivates you? What pushes you? What drives you? And if that thing is internal, if nobody has to call you, if nobody has to prod you, if nobody has to reward you, if nobody has to give you anything, if you are self-motivated and self-regulated, you can have it, you can be it, you can do it. I need you to do me a favor, when you leave, I need you to be honest with yourself. I need you to be transparent. I need you to say, in my, in my dreams, I'm beast mode. Beast mode, my business plan, beast mode. My income that I have for myself, beast mode. What I want to do for my children, beast mode. In the university, the scores I need, beast mode. I've got to go into beast mode to get it. And I want you to look at your time. And you look at your time and say, ah, gazelle. That's a gazelle right there. You look at your habits, gazelle. And as long as your habits are gazelle, but your mindset is beast, you'll never see it. Listen to me, I would prefer that you have a gazelle, literally, I would prefer that your, your, your thought pattern, your, your dreams are gazelles. Like I, I would prefer income, gazelle. But what you did every day was beast. And without you saying a word, without you telling the world, if you if gazelle tattooed, but you act like a beast, guess what you would get? You would get more than what you bargained for because that's what happened to us. All we were doing was videos. We never knew that we would be a global company. We never knew we would be a multi-million dollar company. We never knew we'd have stores in Australia. We never knew we would sell our books in Africa. We never knew our stuff would be in England. We never knew. So we were these small kids doing small stuff, but when you looked at our schedule and our activities, beast mode. You get information from us, it's 3 o'clock in the morning in the States, beast mode. Nobody else is doing it at 3 o'clock in the morning, beast mode. 
everything we do, every Monday, even though it's free, beast mode. So I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you to do me, look, and you owe this to yourself. Beast mode. So those who were here yesterday, I don't want you to say anything. All right, I'm going to ask this question again, and we're going to talk about what you have to do so when that ball drops, you are exactly where you want to be. Because the greatest feeling in the world, guys, the greatest feeling in the world is execution. The greatest feeling in the world is doing what you said you were going to do. There's no greater feeling in the world. Listen to me very closely. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because of the economy. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because of racism. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because it ain't the season. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because they don't love you. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because the opportunity ain't there. The truth of the matter is that you ain't there because you ain't there. I could have fixed this years ago, but I didn't know it was a problem. But that's why it's important to do professional development. I spent money to get this after I got my PhD. And there are some of you, you know what you want. You know what you want, but you are not personally willing to do the work it takes to get it. What you're trying to do is do what you've done on this level and get the next level. You're trying to do exactly what you're doing on this level. You're like, I'm getting up every day. I'm putting in two and a half. I'm putting in three, and I'm not getting the opportunity. The opportunity might require three and a half. I'm lifting weights, I'm eating right, and I'm not getting the opportunity. It might require getting up and working out three and a half. It might require you saying no to your friends. It might require you changing your diet. It might require you moving to another city. Whatever it takes, you gotta be willing to do it, and you keep saying you're not there because of something else, because it's easier to blame somebody else. Look, you got some changing to do. If I don't get to no other slide, you got some changing to do. And I'm telling you, the reason why I'm leaving corporate and going to schools because it's easier to help a doggone middle school kid change than a grown man. My average gonna go up. Dealing with grown men, I talk to 10 grown men, they gonna, they, listen to me very closely. A lot of times when I counsel grown men, first and foremost, they don't want counseling. They want me because I'm anointed to co-sign what they're doing. That's it. They're like, E.T. got a relationship with God. If E.T. says it's cool, then it's cool. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'd rather do elementary kids than grown men. Elementary kids, they've been broke, but they ain't broke, broke yet. Grown people broke, broke. It's easy to help somebody who is broken at a young age than a 50-year-old, a 40-year-old, a 30-year-old. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm telling you to do, since you hate being told what to do, you're going to have to fix yourself since you don't like nobody else telling you what to do. There's something that is blocking your next level, and it's you, and you want to keep saying it's somebody else. People like E.T., I want to do what you do. No, you don't. I'm my own boss. When I worked at Michigan State, I had to be to work at 9 o'clock. When I work for myself, I get up at 3. When I worked at Michigan State, I get to leave at 5. When you work for yourself, you don't have no time when you get off. You don't get off. You stop when the work is done. I work harder for myself than I did when I, and you talking about you want to work for yourself. No, you don't. You can't show up for another man. just being real. There are those of you who work for yourself, you don't even have a plan. You don't even have like a, a vacation package for yourself. You just get to get off whenever you want to. What kind of job is that? You can just take off when you want to? That ain't no real job. You ain't got no insurance. You ain't paying yourself. You ain't, Oh, but when you had a job, you could get there for them when they wanted you to get there. Oh, you had to tell them when you was going to be sick, when you want, but for yourself, you ain't got to do nothing. That's why you can't blow up. You ain't got enough discipline to discipline you. That's why you're making the money you're making because you got to let somebody else do it because you don't have enough sense to do it for yourself. You're going to tell me, E, you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I live in America. You mean to tell me I could be a multimillionaire by getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning? I do it every day. And guess what? When I get my paper, I take a nap when I'm tired. Ain't nobody say I got to get up at 3 and stay up at 3. <laughs> 
I got to stay up, get up at 3 and stay up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I just got to get up at 3 and get all my work done before y'all get up. I just got to make all my phone calls while y'all still sleep. I just got to make all my phone calls while y'all party. That's a poverty mindset. And so I need you to think about when you go home, what do you need to change? What are some of the things you need to let go to get to that next level? Yeah, females, yeah, because those females are not important, more important than that female. You hear what I just said? Those females, ain't nobody telling you not to be social, but those females that are distracting you are not more than that female. And who am I talking about? How many of y'all feel like literally, for real, your mama deserves to get out of that situation she in right now? For some of you, how many of y'all mamas deserve to get out? How many of y'all moms have the ability right now on their own to make 40, 50 mil? Let me see your, your hand for your rep for your mom. But how many of you have a chance to do it for your mom? Let me see it. Man, you got to have that dog. You got to take that personal, bro. You got to take that personal that your mom is counting on you. So next time you want to drink and act a fool, just do me a favor. FaceTime like your mom. I just want you to see what we're doing, mom. I'm doing this for you. I just for real, I could go all around and do that same thing and some of y'all partying and hanging out with people when I could fool with 2,000 people that you probably gonna be cool with one and you are willing to risk your mama's future for some people you ain't even gonna know 15, 20 years from now. People you're not even gonna be hanging out with. Get over the low self-esteem, get over trying to prove stuff. Right, so we already know what, what happens if we fail, right? We know what that looks like, don't we? We know what failure looks like, so we need to give what a chance. We need to give victory a chance. So I ain't gonna lie, I was scared to get the master's degree. I was scared to get the PhD because I couldn't really write that well, right? And I was like, I, I told my professor, what happens if I fail? He said, what happens if you pass? I said, but what happened if I don't get it? What happened if I put in all these years and it don't work out? He said, but what happens if you put in all these years and you get it? And I got it and it has changed my life. Doors have opened for me that couldn't open for me in education without my PhD. Because I got to stay hungry. I don't want to use titles that make me look sweet. I don't want to use titles that make me, I try to keep it humble. I walk around, I don't even want people to know who I am. Why? Because I still want to have that dog. I still need to stay hungry. And when you got pride, it gets in the way of you being hungry. And you need that hunger. That's why I talk about slavery. Not because I want to be reminded of it, but I remember how hungry they were trying to be free. I remember they used to get caught. I remember they used to get licks. I remember they used to go to prison. I remember the dogs used to attack what? They was fighting for something, they freedom. And I'm still fighting for something. We gotta eat, y'all. I'm number one in the world. How long you think that's gonna last? You think that's gonna last for 20 years? You think it ain't no kid out there watching me who gonna be better than me in the next year or two? You think I'm gonna be number one forever? So while I'm number one, let's eat. While I'm number one, let's get every gig we can get. While I'm number one, let's do corporate. Let's do NBA. Let's do NFL. Let's do Major League Baseball. Let's do soccer. I got clients and everyone. We gonna eat. And y'all do that little stuff about you gonna eat, but y'all ain't got no dog on motor. You get tired quick. You, you practice for one or two days, you wore out. You do a couple of hours, you tired. But yet you competing against people right now, that's their lifestyle. And you think they about to let you take their lifestyle? What's gonna separate you from everybody else? What's gonna separate you from everybody else? What are you gonna do to separate yourself? Because a lot of you don't see that what's gonna take you to that next level that's gonna separate you from everybody else because you gotta have something that separates you. And so once we perceive something a certain way, it affects how we value it. Hey man, you lost value. That's all. You lost the value of it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You lost the value. I need you to get the value back. I need you to get the value back. You, your, your perception is off, and now you're starting to treat people a certain way. You're, trying to, you're starting to do a certain thing. People are like, E, you blew up. You're doing... I, listen to me. It's so bad. I'm telling the people that book my gigs. Don't book, don't book no gigs on Monday. Try your hardest not to book no gigs on Monday. E, why? You got a chance to make thousands thousands of dollars. Why would you do? Nope. I got to stay... I got to stay close to the place that blew me up. Listen to me, Greg Coleman. I'm just keeping it 100, y'all. As a company, we have blown up. 
There are people in our company, they used to do one thing, they're doing something totally different. I guarantee you I'm doing exactly what I was doing from day one, and I have not changed. I'm still hitting middle schools. I'm still killing the babies in elementary school. How bad do you want to write? I'm still in the elementary schools. I hadn't lost value. And the reason why some of you aren't successful is because the value you had, that thing when you first start doing it, you don't have that same value no more. You don't treat that thing the way you used to treat that thing when you first got that thing. And so what God is saying is, I need you to change your perception because once you change your perception, everything changes, son. Once you change your perception, the value changes. And once the value changes, the energy that you give it is totally different. You. I want you to pray in this room right now because God gave you a job and that was the job that was going to take you to the next big opportunity. But because you don't value what you have right now, you can't get what's next. You have, you have, you not, you have now disrespected, like you don't even use the gift no more. You have disrespected it. God said, I want to show you something, son. So what I need you to do is I'm going to need you to do five or six gigs. I don't need you to put, I know what you're doing, but I'm going to need you to go a little bit harder. Now, you ain't got to lose your marriage and you ain't got to be all over the world, but I need to switch some stuff up. And I said, okay, God, you got to show me because I just don't speak for money. That's just not my thing. God said, do you think I gave you all these opportunities? You think I connected you with all these people for you not to make billions, son? Have you lost your mind? I was like, God, I just don't see. He said, the perception. Okay, this is what I want you to see. I want you to see that. Listen to me, y'all. For every, I, you know how many kids I had called? Because it's the end of the year. They got to get their tuition paid so they can get their grades. And God says, for every opportunity, for every business that you build, you ain't got to take it and buy a Rolls Royce, but take that $100,000 and send some kids to school. The same feeling you had when you paid your mortgage off, just go pay somebody else mortgage off. Just because you don't want to, just because you don't need stuff, just because you ain't necessarily trying to compete against other speakers, I gave you this opportunity, and the reason why you're not doing it the way I told you to do it is because you don't value money, because you're thinking about self, and I, and I know you don't need a billion dollars, but the work that I called you to do is going to require a billion dollars. <laughs> Son, you young. When you was in your 20s, it was good to inspire. Then in your 30s, you start empowering. Now I need you to employ. So the value chain, now I'm like, I'm all the way up. Nothing can stop me. I'm being real. I just was doing business with somebody that was like 33% exclusivity. I'm like, what? You know how hard I work for this? I ain't giving nobody no, what? Like I ain't trying to be funny and I know where you coming from. And you got to respect your product. I get that. But I'm at a place right now, I ain't got to pay for nothing. Most people, because of the, what the Lord has done for me, through, through me, for them, they trying to get, I ain't, I ain't got to do deals with people who trying to get a piece of nothing. I'm working with a dude, I'm going to Cali, they about to do my whole conference for me. They the best in the world. They got, they the best in the world. They ain't charging me jack. My man like, E, this dude worth 25 grand. He going to do this for you, don't worry about it. I'm like, what you mean don't worry about it? He was like, I use one of my favorites for you. I was at a real dark place and you saved me. I'm like, you trying to do percentages with me? How, you should have called me 10 years ago. You should have got me five years ago. I got people in the world now that feel like they want to pay me back for what God has done through me for them. I ain't got to, I ain't got to do none of that kind of stuff. You're not valuing it because you're not valuing, you're not getting your blessing. God is looking at you and he gave you that thing and the way you're looking at that thing, God said, you ain't getting another thing. I wouldn't give you another thing the way you treated the thing I gave you.